Hello, and welcome to Rejuvenature. This podcast is dedicated to helping you find health in this toxic world. I am Dr. D.K. Geyer, and I will be the host for the show. Hello, and welcome. I'm excited today to introduce Lindsay Long. She is part owner in the Float Center in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, has a two-year degree from Hagerstown Community College in criminal justice, is a Reiki master, has been a doula for two years, and is a wife and mother of five children. We are so excited to have you here today. So welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, we're going to dive right in today because being a doula sounds very fascinating. So would you please describe what a doula does and what prompted you to choose this path? So on a very basic level, being a doula is just you're supporting birthing people and their partners mentally, physically, emotionally, all of the things, whatever they need, you're just there to support. It's a very rewarding job. And I think what really led me down this path was I suffered a little bit of postpartum depression with my fourth son. And I just realized how big of a need there was for birthing people out there, like after the fact. The postpartum part is what really triggered it for me. The labor, I've always been intrigued by. It just seemed like the right thing to do. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That is a personal story. Postpartum is more prevalent than what people like to realize or discuss. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. And I mean, that's a lot to do with it too, is just the fact that you want to get out there and you want to, you know, the social norms, you want to kind of squash those a bit and just spread awareness with some things. Yes. Awareness is the perfect word. Hearing your response about what prompted you on this path and how it works. I guess you really don't have many actual appointments like on the calendar for doula services. So you must be ready to assist at like a moment's notice. So can you walk us through, like how does that work for you and the mother-to-be? Sure, well, you do actually have a few appointments. Each doula can run her business however she sees fit. Um, I like to do at least one or two prenatal visits. Right around 20 weeks, we have an appointment. We meet with both parents or whoever wants to be there, actually, if mom wants to be there, grandmas, you know, anybody can attend the meetings, but it's where we get a lot of the family histories and things like that. Anything that they want to discuss, we go over birth plans and just get everything lined up so that we're all on the same page, like the things that they want, kind of their love languages even, just to get everything set up for go day, birthing day. There's at least two appointments ahead of time, one or two, depending on how close they are, what everybody's schedules look like. But as far as being ready when it's labor time is just being on call two weeks before and after their estimated due dates. Most doulas also have a backup doula in case something were to happen that I wouldn't be available. I have somebody that goes in my place. Wow. So there is actually so much to setting up ahead of time. I I guess most people wouldn't realize that. Can you explain what type of clients do you have? Like, why would someone want to hire a doula? What are the benefits for both mom and the baby in doing so? There's a lot of different reasons for hiring doulas. Everybody's personal reasons are, are different. Some just want the extra support. A lot of times the partners, men never seen their their partner in so much, you know, I don't like to use the word pain, but they've never seen their partner. Let's get real. Yes. It's pain. We try to leave as much negative connotations and things, you know what I mean? If they go into it thinking pain, they're going to feel pain. That way they're not already coming into it with a negative mindset. So we like to change kind of like the wording a little bit. But there's so many different reasons back to that. Anybody could hire a doula. They might not have family local. It could be somebody scared of the hospital. I mean, there's just so many reasons why someone personally would want to hire extra help. Wonderful. I loved birthing wave. This is the first time I've heard that. Yeah. So we call them like waves. So that's kind of what it feels like. It feels like a wave coming over. It's a, a hug, right? You're getting a hug. Your belly, a contraction feels like. 
Well, that's wonderful. So how far in advance of the birth do you normally interview? You said 20 weeks. So what if I change my mind and I'm at 30 weeks? Is it still too late? Not at all. So we can still meet with them. It's just kind of crunch time. You won't have as many interactions. I personally like to meet with them once or twice. The more they know you, the more they talk to you, the more comfortable they are with you. They're going to be in their most vulnerable state, you know, so it's just you want them to be comfortable. The more touches you can have, the better, but it's never too late. I've went to a birth and after meeting somebody for a week. That's kind of exciting at the same time. <laughs> are you aware or do you have any knowledge of any insurance plans that currently cover doula services? There aren't a lot of insurances. I know that Medicaid is working on covering, I think we're only up to three states so far to where the state is fully covered. There are a lot of states that are considering it, and then there are a lot that still haven't even started the process. Unfortunately, Pennsylvania is one that has not started the process yet. Maryland is considering it. So those that are local to us, those are, are where we stand for, for that. So normally price is, is a major factor. Like how do you afford a doula when the insurance doesn't cover it? There's payment plans. I mean, most doulas do payment plans. It's just one of those things that if it's a priority for you, you kind of just find where you can save and, and what you need to do to make it happen. Yes. What advice can you offer to someone who is contemplating becoming a doula? Do it. <laughs> if you're thinking about do doing it. it, it's just where your heart is at and, and you want to serve and make changes and do all the things it's not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of hard things that come with being a doula. While it's very a very rewarding career, it's also, I mean, there there could be loss and and things like that. So it, it can be a very tough career choice as well. But I say do it. We need more doulas. What would you say is the most crushing part for a woman having a child and going through labor without support from someone else other than perhaps hospital staff? I think it would be being alone in the hospital. It's very intimidating. Not having someone to advocate for you or to remind you of your choices, um, things like that. It's a lot. It's a lot, especially for first time parents. It's a lot of information to try and ingest and understand. And I mean, that's where the birth plan comes in. The birth plans are very important because you give them their choices and kind of like homework where they go research and figure out what's best for them and their family and their baby. But a lot of times they forget those things. So in the spur of the moment, if they're put on the spot and they need to make a decision, they're not remembering or thinking clearly about some of their choices that they need to make and what that entails. So it's just having somebody there to advocate for you in, in the hospital field, I think is, is where they're the most needed. Okay. Can you walk me through that? So I'm a new mom to be, I've never had a child. I don't have sisters or a best friend that can walk me through that. So I go in the hospital and you are my advocate. A lot of hospitals nowadays, they'll, I mean, that's, again, we go back to the birth plan because on the birth plan, it'll say normally a lot of women know whether, you know, they're going to ask for if they want pain meds ahead of time, or if they know that they don't want to be offered pain meds, it will say on the birth plan, do not offer, we'll ask for, right? Because then if they're in there telling you, you only have so much longer before you can not get the epidural or you can't, it's kind of like they're making that available and when you're in that state of mind you could be easily influenced knowing that it's not really what you want that birth plan is very very important for the hospital staff to be able to communicate effectively the doula is there to kind of remind them of the birth plan and for the hospital staff and the parents right like it would be my job to just remind them remember this is what you you wanted normally we have a, a word kind of like a safe word or like when they get to the point and they say Akuna Matata, right? <laughs> okay, it's time. She wants her pain meds. Like, just let her decide when she's ready without encouraging her, without it being on the forefront. Does that make sense? It does. 
And that's a great way to explain it. You know, you have these safe words and I actually use those when I go with somebody who doesn't understand what the doctor is saying to them. And we have a safe word. It's normally, we call each other sunshine. So we let them come up with their safe word. What's a word that means something to you and your partner? Um, and they come up with their own word. It was just <laughs> come off the top of my head. But yeah, so they come up with their own word. So they know when they've had enough or when they're ready to make that decision. It works very nicely. Are there any great experiences that you have witnessed that you would like to share? Because you went through COVID situation where that imposed a hardship on many new parents. Actually, both personally and career wise, I, I went through it. I had a baby in, you know, in 2020 as well. And it was very different. And it prompted me to have a home birth. And it was the best time. Like it was amazing. But I've also supported people during COVID times in the hospital too, once we were allowed back in. To the original question, I can't point out one specific great experience because each birth is very special and each birth is so unique and each, you know, for the takeaway from each birth, but you know, like after you leave and you're processing these births, like, like all the, all the little moments put together that, that make it such a, a rewarding career. Thank you. What a wonderful idea. Where can we find your information, Lindsay? How can people connect to you if they need a doula? Thank you. Uh, right now, I'm just on Facebook, uh, Tri-State Doulas. My website is in the works, and it should be finished very shortly. I'm excited about that. The whole branding process and the website's been quite the journey. But um, currently just on Facebook and Instagram is Tri-State Doulas. Wonderful. Well, we thank you for sharing all of that. Uh, Lindsay has offered a whole different insight into birthing as a new mother or even if you want an at-home birth. You can have support by choosing the services of a doula. We appreciate you so much, Lindsay, for, oh, thank you. Yeah, for joining us today. So the call to action for our audience is if you have any questions or if you're planning to give birth, or be a great aunt for a new birth. Maybe you could just mention uh, to someone about doula services and to research because that support is invaluable at the moment. Thank you again, Lindsay. Well, thank you Lindsay, for having me. For all the incredible information you have shared with us today and to our audience, we just wish you the very best. Mm -hmm.